Sambula Vinaka. Namaste and welcome to another episode of Super Rugby Fijians. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to our viewers joining us around the region through Sky Pacific. Now, as you can see, we are here at VCC Village. Yes, Hi, John. We are here at VCC Village and this is the same village yeah. that has produced some big names in Fiji Rugby. Yes, yes, such yes. Such as Ifiremi Rawanga. Uh, Wallabies, Randika Samu, right? Yes, and tonight we will be bringing you Samu Kerevi. Oh, yes, we will bring you Samu Kerevi. Now, Rodney, I think before we make our way into the village, I think there's some protocol and procedures that we have to go through. That's right, John. Now, why don't we just look for the Turagani Koro so he can better explain the procedures here in VCC Village, eh? Yes. Come on, let's just look for him. Now we've just completed our protocol and a short tour by the Turangani Koro, Mr. Anre Tuinraki. Now, behind us is the chiefly residence of the Momoilevu Tuivunda. And if you see, Rodney seems to be amazed by the Mbure behind us. Rodney, what were you doing back there? Well, I'm just so amazed at how big this village is. Well, yes, it's a very big village indeed. And it's really, really beautiful. You're absolutely right. Now, Let's join Vashnil Prasad, who is with Samu Kerevi in Queensland. Bula Vinaka, I'm Vashnil Prasad. Samu Kerevi is another Fijian born who will make his debut for Reds. Stay with us, we'll catch up with him. My name is uh, Samuel Vatuni Vewuke Kerevi, uh, from VCC Vunda. Uh, was with Watonga. Uh, I moved over from Fiji back in 2000. Been living here for 13, 14 years now. And uh, yeah, life here is it's really good. Um, there are a lot of opportunities in Brisbane, especially Australia, just for for rugby, especially. And uh, just for the family, yeah, it's good to get um, live with my grandparents. And it's good that um, you know, I still have my family back in Fiji that support me. And a lot of prayers coming from them and stuff, so yeah, now nah, it's good, but life here in Brisbane is real good right now. I was born in uh, Suva, um, most, mostly live in uh, Kinoya, in uh, Savai Street, that's where we mostly lived most of our childhood, just um, growing up there. And uh, my brother was uh, mostly stayed in uh, the west side in um, Ruffle Range. But uh, as I grew up, we moved over to the Solomon Islands with my grandparents. And from there we uh, came over to Australia and we reside in Brisbane now. I started playing rugby, I guess, for South Magpies back in uh, under nines, I think. Uh, when I first came over from Fiji, just didn't have a club to go to. And uh, my brothers were playing for South. And uh, his, one of his mate's kids were playing for South. So they invited me along to play for uh, South Magpies juniors. But then after just, I think, a year from there, it was pretty far from home. And I moved to Sunnyburn Dragons, which is where I played um, basically all my um, all my junior rugby there, and up to the age of uh, about under 17s, and then yeah, moved over to Jeeps for my senior years. In Fiji, um, primary school was I guess I only went to uh, kindy there, so I didn't spend much primary school in Fiji. Mostly my primary school was in um, Solomon Island. I spent one year there, then started grade one again as I came to Brisbane. But um, yeah, childhood was good. Like you know, filled with a lot of memories back in the day, like especially running around. Um, but mostly just here in Brisbane was I uh, grew up most of my childhood and then I would go back and spend most Christmases with uh, my family, my brothers and all my cousins and that from uh, everywhere around. But no, it was good. Childhood was good. Just family it was really family oriented. And I guess um, being Christians in our church was the main big factor for us. And yeah, it was good though. I've been back, I think, four or five times now, especially for Christmas. I just went uh, last Christmas, last December, I went there for uh, my brother's 21st. And uh, just my mum's, uh, my grandmother's memorial service. But uh, yeah, it was good. Like, I went there for Fiji for under 20s in 2012. I played for uh, uh, Thai Liberal Rugby there. That's when we spent, uh, like, one of our childs, I guess, playing for them for the under 20s. And um, got blessed enough to be able to play for the top team. And uh, it was a good experience playing for Thai Liberal there. And a big, uh, big fan of them. Um, but and uh, I guess at the end, towards the end, after the 20s, um, 20s competition in South Africa, I got to play for my village, uh, Wunda, Wunda Green. Uh, it was a massive, uh, massive blessing for me and my brother to be able to play for them. You know, it was so exciting um, just to play for my village team back in uh, Fiji. It was just you know, filled with uh, a lot of family in there. So yeah, I was just that was probably one of my high, um, you know, high rugby moments just playing for my village team back then. I mean, uh, Rindike from the same same village back in Fiji in Vichyse. 
I guess he's playing in uh, Japan now. Uh, but yeah, he's going real well, I guess, you know, from all the highlights you watch him playing for Wallabies and that, so things like that to aspire to. Um, we've got a lot of family and friends, like uh, family friends, you know, playing for Brumbies, like another one is to the Kroonrani and Chris, Chris Kroonrani as well, just, you know, um, childhood friends from back, back in from all, all churches and that. But just um, growing up and watching those boys and just watching uh, Junior Russell Lair play now for the Western Force is a massive blessing for our community in Brisbane. You know, seeing a lot of the boys uh, take the next step in, in their footy, you know, being disciplined enough to to actually uh, maintain, you know, Super Rugby uh, level and stuff like that. So just to see those boys uh, get where they're at now, it's, you know, it's a massive blessing for our community. It's just something to aspire to as a, as a young footy player. I guess um, just watching the Reds as I was young, you know, you all, I guess all Queensland kids always want to play for the Reds or just, you know, to be able to play for that, um, uh, for that red jersey. But um, I guess growing up in school, boys was, um, playing through school and stuff, um, playing rugby at a high level was, was one of the main goals. Mm -hmm. I guess, um, you know, aspiring to be a super rugby player wasn't really in the cards for me. It was just um, trying to be trying to be a good footy player, just, you know, enjoying my rugby. But I guess as the opportunity came in um, for playing Premier Rugby in Jeeps, you know, it was, uh, it was a massive uh, milestone to be able to, to get to this opportunity now. You know, I just thank God for the opportunity he's given me now. And, uh, you know, I do it for my family and do it for him. And, um, but yeah, it was just, I guess, I guess just finishing school and playing under 20s and that, uh, it, was, it was a massive goal just to uh, reach where I am now. I have a manager, um, New Star Sports. I think they've changed their name now. Uh, Brett and Anthony uh, Bacconi. Um I guess they gave me a call on, um, it was one of the one of the weekends I was taking my uh, my cousin to a formal and um, I got a call just saying that, um, you know, Reds are wanting to have a contract with me and, and you know, I was, I was stoked, I couldn't believe it. You know, I just prayed right then and then, just thank God for um, the opportunity he's going to give us. Um, me and my family and just um, told my dad and he was just, you know, over the moon, he was happy as and um, didn't really tell anyone else after that. but. I actually signed the contract on my birthday, which was a you know massive blessing for me to like as a birthday present. But yeah, um, it was really exciting times, and uh, I just thank God. I signed till the end of this year, so end of October, it's a one-year contract, and um, you know just hopefully make most of it now. You know all the time I give the boys and just training, just make the most of it and just learn everything I can, and just push for um, I guess for a full-time position. They they set up a lot of um, uh, terms of education. You know, they, they uh, look look after us there, you know, for them it's really important to set us up after rugby. It's not just uh, all about footy, you know, after rugby is really important to them as well. Just uh, um, it's not just like being healthy as well, just off the field, but I guess um, education-wise, uh, learning new things and even cooking classes like we can take, um, business classes that we can take or whatever we need help with, you know, um, uh, our team here support staff are really supportive and whatever we want to um, uh, want to do and a lot of the boys at Reds have their own businesses that they run um, which is uh, like which is an amazing thing like to be able to run a business at the same time as uh, being able to on a full-time um, training schedule is you know it's a hectic for them but you know they're able to do it just with the support stuff that we have right at the moment we're just waiting on to start um, uh, uh, deployment in business that's what I'm, um, I've selected to do for um, throughout the year just get uh, get a diploma and uh, hopefully you know keep pushing towards that after rugby or uh, whenever I can and remember if you're a super rugby fan you could be in to win a Chiefs jersey just text in your answer to the following question who are the defending champions for super rugby text to 3597 to go into the draw to win that Chiefs jersey autographed by Chiefs winger Aseli Tigurotuma himself
Welcome back. Now, Rodney, why don't you take a look at that scenery? Magnificent, John. Well, that's one of the beautiful scenes this village has to offer. John, and it all began here for Samuke Revi. Yes. From humble beginnings here in the village, yep. and now he's making a name for himself in the Super Rugby competition in Australia. You're absolutely right. And it gives me hope, John. Eh? Really? As an aspiring rugby player. Eh? Okay. I want to be a world-class hooker, prop, locks, winger, and also a fullback. Wait, wait, wait a minute. And I'll to top it off, yes. I want to be a reserve. Well, that's almost all the position in our uh, 15th team. Well, to be big, you have to think big. Well, we'll just leave it at that. Why don't we join Vasil Passat again, who is with Samu Kerevi? I guess you got to be pretty fit. Um, I'm pretty um, uh, different size to, I guess, all the other centers. You know, they're more lean and uh, pretty fit, like uh, boys like um, Tapuai and uh, Harris, and uh, Fying and that. Um, South Tier is another one. Um, but I guess, like, you know, it's the boys here, you know, we've got a good good team around us. The fitness, um, our own um, our own sea coaches and that, they, they really push for our fitness and, you know, it's just um, being able to work off the ball, you know, that's, that's a major thing for our coaches um, as centers, you know, just working hard off the ball and just make sure you're in the right place at the right time. But fitness, fitness is a major key, you know, a major aspect that uh, I guess centers have to have on the field. Yeah, I guess um, the diet, they've put the ownership back on us. You know, it's uh, just that self-discipline that the team has talked about. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a strict diet where they tell you what to eat, what not to eat, but it's just, I guess, on our ownership. And, uh, you know, if you're eating uh, bad food, you know, that's gonna, you're going to feel it in the game. It's going to um, affect your performance. So I guess, you know, getting the best meal preparations and um, uh, being able to set aside, like, the, all the bad food and just being able to eat healthy, that's a major key, you know, being, trying to be a professional, um, professional footy player. you, you got to eat well and train harder so that, you know, you're maintaining your body weight and all your fitness and all things like that. I guess uh, bad food would be like uh, McDonald's, KFC, you know, or even uh, um, eating lovo and that, you know, it might be bad for us. Back in Fiji, I ate a lot of lovo in the Christmas period, but like uh, I tried to maintain it with training. So me and my brother, as we were there, we just tried to train and, um, you know, balance up that diet. So if you're going to eat heaps, you got to train, train harder. Um, but yeah, well, I guess healthy foods, you know, just eating the right, right meals in the right part of the day and just really minimizing what you're going to eat and other proportions and that, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's a major, major step up, I guess, comparing to um, from last year to this year, you know, we train twice, basically twice a day. And so Wednesdays are like a relaxed kind of day, just have um, like yoga and stuff like that. But um, I guess training twice a day, you, you eat, you still eat the same amount, maybe you, you might eat like six times a day. So it's trying to minimize the proportion so you don't eat like, you know, massive amount of foods at dinner or so like you have breakfast and you're trained and eat something small straight after training <coughs> and then maybe eat something just before training again and, and train hard that afternoon, do fitness, whatever, and as you get home have a little snack and then get ready for dinner. But like just proportioning it uh, so you're not eating, you know, too much at dinner time or too much at lunch time, yeah, it's important. Oh yeah, I guess coming to the Reds uh, with um, Oli as a uh, strength and conditioning coach, um, I've got, I felt I've gotten stronger and fitter. Uh, you know, for my bench has gone uh, be, uh, gone better from my uh, past years. They're like lifting at uh, 140 now was one of my best in preseason. And uh, for squats, you know, feeling better. I got just came back from an injury and uh, lifting more weight each and every week. So you know, it's all credit to our, um, our team that we have here and the support staff that we have. You know, their key and their goal is to um, get the best out of us. And we just well, our job is to play footy. And yeah, that's um, but. In terms of lifting, uh, I felt definitely got stronger and uh, fitter. You know, when we're on the training paddock, you know, it's everyone switches on, everyone knows when to be on. But uh, when we're off, it's really good. It's like the, the culture here is, um, it's really tight, tight knit. Um, I think the boys look after each other really well. Um, you know, there's a lot of jokes that happen and uh, a lot of uh, mucking around. But when it, I guess when it comes onto the field, you know, everything's everything's focused, and the boys are really focused on their job and each uh, individual task they have to do. But uh, the boys all around uh, are really good. Uh, you know, they've, especially for the new guys that come in, um, they're really helpful and just um, helping us in, in everything that we need to do. Yeah, I injured it during the Chiefs game. It was my first, actually my first run. I uh, just kind of landed awkward and um, one of the Chiefs boys just kind of landed on my ankle, which uh, kind of twisted it a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this, all this is just for safety precautions. And um, now, um, hopefully I'll be back for uh, mostly start of the season and be back in fit and shape. But for me, it's a personal goal. Um, my first goal is just playing for the Reds and uh, my club footy, you know. Um, first things first, and that's what ahead, what's ahead of me now. Um, for any test footy, and like I haven't really thought about it, uh, I guess I'll come to that um, 
bridging across it and right now I just focused on the red season and uh, reds, um, reds, yeah, red season at the moment. I just uh, to everyone back at home, uh, you know, I love you guys, uh, people from uh, VCC, uh, all the gang from Wunda and Rough Range and all the family in Suba. I just wanna, you know, God bless you guys, just, I love your prayers and just your support uh, just for the season. I hope you guys can support the Reds and just, uh, you know, cheering us on, you know, every team and uh, just keep your prayers in us and, uh, yeah, thank you. And remember, if you're a Super Rugby fan, you could be in to win a Chiefs jersey. Just text in your answer to the following question. Who are the defending champions for Super Rugby? Text to 3597 to go into the draw to win that Chiefs jersey autographed by Chiefs winger Aseli Tikurotuma himself. Welcome back. As you can see, we've made our way here to the Wunda District School Grounds. And yes. Yes, John, this is the same ground that Samu Kerivi played on as a teenager playing for the Wunda team. I heard about that, Rodney. Now, I, I want to ask you a question. Standing here in this very ground, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel like I'm closer to my dream of becoming a world-class prop, hooker, locks, winger and fullback. Okay, when you talk about coming closer to your dreams, are we talking about days, years, miles, kilometers, centimeters, millimeters, well, inches? closer than I was yesterday. Oh, closer than you were yesterday. Well, you know what, we'll just leave it at that. Now, Rodney, let's join Vasil Prasad, who had interviewed Samu Kerevi's grandfather and how he had shed some light on his rugby career. It's really a big uh, achievement, big in the sense that uh, you know, one of the things that has uh, transpired over the years uh, in his life, uh, to see the development of uh, an area of interest in his life, uh, in the area of sports. And it's now it has come to fruition. Uh, the fact that he has uh, uh, joined the Reds and uh, uh, he played in his first uh, debut for the Reds uh, last uh, Saturday. That in itself is it's an achievement. It's something that he's, uh, he's, he, he looked forward to growing up uh, as a young person, uh, even his, in his pre in, in, uh, primary school days and also in high school. And when he left uh, second uh, high school and uh, he joined the clubs. Now it has been one of the, as I was saying, that it's, it's in his area of interest. Eh? And we're so proud to see all the achievements. Uh, that is, uh, he, has, uh, he has acquired so far. <laughs> Very close. Um, Samu has been uh, part of this family uh, since and he was uh, since he was born in Suva. When he was born, he was uh, the, 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 um, uh, his parents were with us in uh, in Suva. Whilst I was working for government in Fiji, and when we move on to the Solomon Islands for me to take up a position here in the Commonwealth Secretariat. Uh, he was part of, he, we brought him with us. And when we moved from the from Solomon Islands to here, he's been part of my family. And uh, um, we have reached a stage now that we have that kind of bond, which is so strong. And uh, it is really gaining momentum as we uh, continue on over the years. Eh? Uh, so we are really very close. Uh, he is. He is being the uh, youngest. You will see my my other children. They're all grown up now, right? And they've moved on and they are, they've established, uh, established themselves uh, here in uh, Brisbane. 
and uh, he is the only person that still live, uh, lives with me. My wife passed away last uh, last year, um, so leaving him with me is so close. It's really, it, it, because of his clo closeness, and I really enjoyed uh, living with him. It was also an emotional uh, situation also for us. Emotional in the sense because uh, my wife was in hospital at that time when we received the news that uh, uh, it was the Melbourne rebels that were trying to get him, and then the Melbourne uh, and then the Queensland Reds. They were competing, which one to get his signature. And uh, you know, it came in at a time when my wife was really you know, very ill in the hospital, which really led to her to her passing. So that's why I'm saying that though we were happy, but it, it arrived at a time when we were really, you know, we were the uh, the family was uh, was. Uh, confronted with that, uh, even until when she passed away, when my wife passed away. And as far as uh, Samu's commitment to training, um, he is really committed to that. I know that uh, he's, uh, he has developed the discipline in him uh, to be committed to the timings for his training. Um, I know that because when he wakes up in the morning at about 6, 6.30, he leaves here to go for training and he's there all throughout the day, uh, then come back. He never misses that. And I know how angry he always be when, we, when he is delayed, if we want to uh, get him occupied on other things that might deter him from or missing out on the training. But we haven't really uh, uh, done that. He's always... Uh, uh, a person that enforces discipline into Samus' life, and Samus knows, knows it very well. Uh, personal discipline, any discipline to do with uh, living within the community, relating to one another within the community. Her grandmother is always very sharp on that one. Uh, and there are times when uh, she will have to chase Samu around with a piece of uh, a stick or broom to try to try to whack him and when he was uh, in South Africa uh, his uh, parents in Fiji called me and they said that there was some scar, drug scars from, from France that were trying to get him. I told uh, those people in Fiji who called me, I told him Sam, Samu is uh, mature enough to make his own decision. He knows uh, what rugby is all about and he has the kind of maturity he can analyze things, he knows how to, he'll be the right person to. Uh, I told them, our role, mine and them who are calling in Fiji, our role is just to advise him, let him make his own decision on the things that will be good for him. The message would be one of trust. I think it's important that we trust our, 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 our boys, we trust, we trust our children. Well, they are no longer children, they are grown up now. We have to trust them, we trust them that they can do, they can... Uh, no, we, 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 we trust them that they, can, they are mature enough, they have the, the, the mentality to be able to decide for themselves and do things uh, that will be to their own good. Uh, I look at uh, my role, people of my age uh, would be on, uh, on an, an advisory capacity. Well, that's the show for tonight. Now, before we go, we would like to extend a big vinaka wakalevu to the Toke Vunisei, the Momo level of Tuivunda and the Turagani Koro VCC village, Mr. Anare Tunraki. Now, coming up next week, we will have Nemani Nandolo's younger brother, Chris Kurinrani. Now, until then, Namaste and Nisa Mode.